Hey everybody, how's it? Aloha, this is Jeep Seeker, your old composer here at the Decomposer Lounge. And this is the year that I said I was going to be reacting and sharing my, my thoughts with bands that are new or up and coming, up and coming or, or have been around and I catch their links and, um, you know, celebrate musicians and music and compositions. You know, you don't have to be super famous, you know, if I'm liking the song, I'm, I'm on it. Uh, you know, I, I think the best part of this is sharing talent with, you know, I've got a couple hundred thousand uh, people to kind of hang out and, and probably one of the best things that I have derived from this are the comments when people say they wouldn't have never heard of this band if they hadn't, you know, heard it on this channel and stuff. And to me, that is the pinnacle of everything that I do. Truly it is. It's just to spread the aloha with the music and, and turn other people onto that. That being said, uh, this is the first of uh, one of those bands that um, was turned on to me through Patreon. Uh, the name of the band is Ghost of the Sun. The name of the song is In Lil. Um, unfortunately, I did get a, a sad uh, uh, message from one of the band members that the band founder and the guitar player passed away uh, on the first of this year, 2022. So. Uh, with a heartfelt condolences to the band, the band members, uh, the family, and everybody uh, involved in his life, uh, my condolences to you. But his legacy now begins, so let's do this. Uh, this is Ghosts of the Sun in Lil. All right. I gotta stop somewhere, but I really, really don't want to. I love, I, I guess maybe this is gonna be an instrumental, I'm not sure, uh, it looks like it's uh, nine minutes long. I love the layered ambience that's happening here, but even more so that opening that had that sequence that was happening, uh, tonal and rhythmical sequence. I had locked myself into what I thought was the downbeat, and I started just to groove into it and stuff, because this really is my, my personal favorite type of music, ambient metal, uh, trance-like, um, ethereal power, if you would, um, you know, with obviously there's, you know, 
distorted guitar arrangements and everything. But, but what I want to get to is that I was locked into the one, so I thought, and maybe it is, but where the drums came in obviously was not the obvious on the downbeat that I had locked in with myself. So I was really taken off guard so pleasantly with that. <clears throat> uh, I do want to rinse on the drummer. What I love that's happening in these last couple of minutes, excuse me, is that with each passage of the phrase, they're building and changing their layers, you know. And one of the things that's very obvious to me is how uh, the drums is playing a very important part of that. One of the things that started happening when he was doing that that came in kind of reminded me a little bit of one of the first things on my very first reaction is how I glammed on Danny from Tool for doing that on Sober, you know, at least on that live version that I did. So the growth and the development and the arrangements of the drums is just outstanding. What's happening in the background is these different a uh, ambient passages that are being brought in with the guitar. And it does sound like possibly there are some light glassy pads that are supporting it behind it, but I'm not too sure. This is one of those tricky things that when I personally start getting into a song, I kind of sometimes forget what I'm doing and I go, oh shit, did I forget to talk about something? So, you know, this is a really long track and stuff. So also the bass, you saw me, you saw me doing that. What a great bass sound. Right now, the bass now is playing a complete part of the composition, but there was uh, probably about eight to 12 bars where it was a very standout pattern with a great sound. Great engineering happening here. Uh, as well. So being that this is a long song, I'm going to I'm going to let a nice little chunk go by um, and then I'm going to jump back in, but I kind of want to get into this a little bit. So I'm going to let a big chunk of this uh, kind of fly by. So here we go. couldn't get let I let too far get away if I, I had to stop and because um, there's a lot churning in my head that first the chugs the guitar compositions and the performance is is so tight and what I love about it is is that it's being played without any uh, let's just say engineering interference if you know what I mean I in the world of, of 
you know, modern uh, recording and stuff like that, clipping tails or getting noise out or something like that. There's no noise in this. It just sounds pure from A to B recorded. Now, there was, <clears throat> excuse me, the first power riff that came up and cleaned up. I'm listening to the bass, and what I loved is that the riff was holding down its pattern, but the bass was moving around um, kind of like, <clears throat> I don't know what's going on here, sorry. Um, it was changing the root of the um, uh, of the pattern by virtue of the bass starting to land on the not so obvious notes. That was so badass, so badass. Uh, the drums, Jesus, who's this guy? Really, seriously, it, it is because of the fact that there's this giant wall of sound and ambience, and this love the the slide guitar thing, that attitude. I don't think I've ever heard a slide guitar. Um, or the slider used in this style of music or anything on my channel yet. Uh, so I, I love the creativity right there, just, just by virtue of giving us something distinctive and, uh, and, and different to kind of latch onto. Uh, but because these are these long patterns that are building and stuff, the, the super interesting thing for me is the drummer and his abilities to, you know, dink with the ride or the ands of the hi-hats and stuff to give these lifts and stuff uh, all the way through it. I think that's absolutely wonderful. I think the whole performance, I guess this isn't instrumental, the whole performance is moving. I think I'm going to try to listen to the rest of this without stopping because I think it just, I, I just think it warrants that uh, because I, I, I feel like I'm going to just miss something if I don't uh, really give it the, the due listen. Uh, but so here we go. Stand by.
Wow. Okay, so right there, that ending at least does enforce the fact that I that I was hearing soundscape, digital soundscape design. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, and you're the pure listener, you know, soundscape is different than drones and, and things that actually have a tone or a value in a key. And a lot of times uh, bands will use that for ambience and darkness and, you know, soundscape, like, like film stuff. You know, I have a shit ton of stuff that I use when I do the projects that I do. Um, I love the subtleness of that guitar solo. And what I mean by that is this, a soloist, a, a musician could have gone seven ways to Sunday on this thing as far as doing, you know, solos and stuff like that. But to me, this track was a complete journey of one step after another, after another, growing and blooming and blooming and then blooming. And then there was, an, there was a time where it just took a breather and kind of redirected the energy. And then got back into, you know, another pattern. You, you may have saw me at some point going like this, and there was a very unique melodic layer, guitar layer that was happening on this side here that I really loved. I had to work to hear it a little bit. I was like, oh, can you push it up just a little bit? But I was, I was really digging into it. This, to me, is the journey that you also have to have in, you don't have to have it in your headsets, but we are such a headset um, uh, world now, you know? that I believe that these kind of dynamics with this style of music, I, I don't know what the style of this would be called though. Is this ambient metal? Um, I'm not familiar with it, so you guys help me with this. But here, here's the thing. As much as, as my whole life's base has been uh, pretty much around instrumental music first, you know, before songs and stuff, and I never really got, got into songs. That's why I ended up being a composer. I ended up being a composer for film and media and TV because the base of what it is that my life was about with my father, my uncle, my grandparents was around instrumental work. And even though I'm down for jazz and full on hardcore fusion and stuff like that, I am so down for the creativity uh, of music of this style that sets kind of this mood for you. This is what this is all about. This is setting a vibe so you can escape in here. You know, and to each his own, some people want real fast, real slow, whatever the case is. But this is a killer fusion of great guitar work. Um, and, and what I loved about the guitar uh, and the choices of the sounds that were being used is they were also, except for the riffs, you know, the chugging, had a lot of tail on it with uh, either reverb or delay, which is, I guess, what lent itself to this particular style of music. So uh, I was really, really pumped to hear this, to get uh, to listen to this uh, song. Once again, my heart goes out to um, you know the band members, the family, and and uh, but you know like I said earlier, now the legacy begins, and and uh, you know I, I feel I feel completely honored to have had the opportunity to listen to this after I got you know uh, uh, that message. Um, yeah, yeah. Anyhow, listen, you guys take care of yourself. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out. I've got uh, a lot more coming up, and I think I'm going to actually dive into more of this um, ambient metal style instrumental stuff. Uh, stuff. Forgive me. I don't mean to call it stuff. Stuff. <laughs> artwork. Sonic artwork. All right, guys, take care. Aloha. Ah, All right.